Towards the end of last year, we were delighted to welcome to the Midweek Drive Morning Edition uh, Dr. Rainer Zittelmann, uh, one of Germany's leading sociologists, historians and entrepreneurs, and the author of 21 international best-selling books, a lecturer in political science at the Freie University uh, in Berlin, and of course, uh, chief editor uh, at one of Germany's most prestigious publishing houses. Uh, generally an all-round wonderful person, and we are delighted to say Guten Morgen, Dr. Zittelmann. Hello, good morning. Nice to hear you. Excellent. And as ever, good to connect with your good self. Now, in the studio, we've got two fine folk, uh, Rainer, um, one of whom is, has been uh, perusing your uh, your work with respect to uh, socialism, capitalism, the best system for delivering prosperity for all, and that's Ben Lewis. Ben, I think you had a question. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just quite intrigued, actually. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've looked at uh, the brief that we've been given, and uh, I certainly uh, probably like, you know, agree with you, to be honest, about capitalism and uh being the best, uh, better economy out of uh, uh, most uh, so, social states. So this notion, Dr. Zittelman, about the power of capitalism, that the capitalist system is, is being undermined by governments and the public alike, I mean, clearly there are lots of things happening politically across the globe these days in which people are saying it's all the fault of capitalism, it's the C word. You would disagree? No, it's, uh, capitalism is a, a bad word today and socialism is becoming a, a good word and this is what I don't understand. I've been in in Washington a couple of weeks ago at the um, <clears throat> a conference of the Students for Liberty, and uh, even in the United States, where uh, socialism was such a bad word, today a lot of people laugh and then praise socialism. And uh, I think you know more about your discussion in uh, Great Britain, but what I hear from Jeremy Corbyn, I think uh, sometimes uh, maybe many uh, British have forgotten one thing. Everything that Corbyn demands today has happened before in the 70s with high taxes, state-owned enterprises, strong regulations of the economy. And this is what my book is about. Don't, don't forget this experience. Over to your good self, Abigail. Um, as a Canadian, any thoughts on, uh, on, on Dr. Zittelman's work? Um, I am a bit curious. I do have a question for you. Um, when it comes to capitalism, what is your thoughts on the whole idea of the 1% and how they're kind of, I guess the, the idea is that they're, t they're hogging the money, I guess. They're not <laughs> sharing it. <laughs> so, so the 1%, the perhaps illusory 1% that actually own everything and the rest mm -hmm. of us have to make do with what's left. The, yeah. Not the trickle down effect, but the 1%. I don't care so much about the 1%, and I don't care so uh, much about when the people become rich, but I think more about uh, 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 poor people and how you can improve their situation. And I think this is a misleading uh, opinion that uh, the poor are only poor because the, the rich have stolen it from them. I give you one example. This is in my book elsewhere. Take China. In China, we have every week two more billionaires and so many more millionaires. And uh, it started 30 years ago. And at this time in China, 88% of the Chinese people lived in extreme poverty. To date, only 1%. This is a great, amazing story. And at the same time, so many people became very, very super rich. And these are only two, two, co uh, two sides of, of a coin. And so I think it's no contradiction. Ben. Yeah, I'd certainly have to agree with you on that. And also, I find um, actually capitalism encourages people to work harder and to earn more. Uh, I think it, you know, it, it encourages success. Whereas I think socialism uh, and communism, perhaps it's a case of actually uh, people at the top will take the money off you because you don't deserve the rewards. We'll give that to everyone else. I feel like that's what it discourages people from being successful because everything could be just given for free. Uh, I think that's the the idea. I think with capitalism is the fact that. Uh, it encourages people to be successful and it encourages people to earn more money. Yeah, yes, I, I agree. But uh, for example, what, what, what for, for me is very important, the question, what is the alternative? Yes, Look, for example, at Venezuela. This is uh, the last example. Uh, I remember some years ago, all leftists in the world were so enthusiastic about socialism in the 21st century. And I have here a lot of quotes from uh, Jeremy Corbyn even uh, three or four years ago, uh, here, one example, it is a cause for celebration, the achievements of Venezuela and shops in housing and health and education, but above all, its role in the whole world. And this, uh, I have so many quotes from it, and I don't understand it, because it's every time the same in the last hundred years. 
socialism fails always. And I give you one example. Imagine a housewife bakes a cake, and each time the guests feel bad, they, they, they vomit. And she always changes the recipe a bit, but in the basic, the recipe remains the same. It is only slightly modified, and every time the guest gets sick again. Who would be so stupid to do this? But this is exactly what the socialists have done worldwide. The basic recipe remains similar and was only modified again and again. Every housewife would have long ago recognized that the recipe itself is worth nothing. And so I don't understand why people today, again, in the United States, here in Germany, and uh, I think in the UK as well, are enthusiastic about a new form of uh, socialism. I'm, I'm living here in, in Berlin, the, the main capital of, of Germany, and we have a referendum right now for expropriation of a property company, uh, as, as an example. It's just stupid. I don't understand it. Well, referendums in general can be quite difficult to understand, especially the results, as indeed yeah. we're finding. So, yeah, different line there. Uh, Abigail, is, is it a case of basic misunderstanding? Do you, do you find what Ryan is saying, does it resonate with yourself, or you think, I don't know? It does make sense. Um, I'm not big into politics, so I don't know too much about it, but I definitely think I understand capitalism a bit more just from this short conversation, mm. uh, which is funny because I didn't consider myself to be one interested in capitalism so now hearing it from this perspective it has kind of changed my opinion interesting of course the uh, the book the power of capitalism is available now from that point of view is it all down to to misunderstanding and ignorance is that ultimately it that we we kind of as human beings just prefer to sort of tune out and, and, and sort of say oh we'll just go for what appears to be, it appears to be the easy solution and uh, happiness for all dr zittleman Yes, 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 sorry. Uh, I mean, is, is it, uh, it, it, I don't know, sorry. I, no, that, I, I, that's okay. No. Is, 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 is it just a case of an ignorance aspect here? And, and, and it's a case of that basic misunderstanding that's at the heart of this challenge? Yes, I think the problem is um, uh, 30 years ago, and when I was young, we had this, we, we saw every day this alternative with uh, capitalism, socialism. We could compare everything like here in Germany between West Germany and East Germany. And we saw what is the real alternative. And now it's a long time ago, and we have a lot of younger people who, who uh, for, forgot, forgot about it. And look, for example, I have one chapter in my book. It's about the 70s in, 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 in Great Britain, where you, you live. In this time, uh, Great Britain was called the sick man of, uh, of Europe. I have one chapter about it. And at this time, you had exactly this, what socialists like. Uh, do you know this uh, this um, uh, song by the Beatles, Tax Man? Absolutely, Mr. Well, Heath, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. That's indeed that back in the sixties. Yeah. There's, there's there is one part of socialism I, I do like, especially in the UK, and that's uh, with the NHS. Because uh, I think with a, with a system like that that we've got, I think uh, it's, it's benefited many people in the in the country uh, over the many years. Uh, and I think that's one of the positives, perhaps, to, to come from it. However, I think mass stain mass. Uh, state-owned, uh, that's when problems do occur. Uh, and I think the lack of quality comes into play and, and various uh, other different uh, issues as well. It's certainly something which I think we'll continue to go and talk about and, and work through in various sort of ways. I'm glad we managed to at least connect uh, via telephone as opposed to, to a normal Skype thing. I'm sure we'll get that sorted out for next time. Dr. Ryan Zittelman, have you had a reasonably interesting telephonic link with us? Has it been okay for yourself? Yes. Good, exactly. Ausgezeichnet, Seigner, as I said, excellent. And it's nice to see a second caller from Berlin because clearly we had uh, uh, William uh, Coles on last night talking also about his experiences in Berlin and how you can still remember the sort of challenges that Berlin actually has. So can we look forward to connecting with you again, Dr. Sittelman, in the not too distant future? Uh, we'll make a suggestion, sir. I think we will. We will definitely sort of speak again. Dr. Zittelman, uh, have a splendid day. A reminder, of course, that the book is The Power of Capitalism uh, by Dr. Rainer Zittelman. And I'm sure we'll uh, have lots of things to talk about as the, uh, the world proceeds, hopefully, to a better all-round experience. Because let's face it, I think we all want to have good things happen to us in all sorts of ways. Indeed. In all sorts of ways.